we have been lucky enough to travel full time for the past 10 months. We've been to 16 amazing countries and had some incredible experiences, but I don't think anything is going to compare to this one. Over the next two days, we get to volunteer at an elephant sanctuary here in Cambodia, where we not only help the sanctuary with some building projects, but we also get up close and personal with some of these beautiful giants. A little too close at times. Oh my gosh, they're coming right towards us. There's a baby! Oh my god! The journey itself is about 20 minutes long. Uh, we're going to stop sporadically to grab supplementation for the elephants. Uh, as soon as you're ready, grab all your bits and bobs. Follow Gemma over to the silver truck. We can be off for a adventurous day of fun. Morning, beautiful people. <laughs> We've just started our trek into the jungle. We are looking for a group of elephants. We were picked up this morning in town in San Monorum and then we drove out to the Elephant Valley project where we met our guide who's back there. Um, hello! <laughs> Good to see baby. <laughs> yes! <laughs> he gave us a big introduction about how the Elephant Valley project was started, how it's funded, where your money goes when you do come to visit the Elephant Valley project. And now we're going to be hiking for how long? Like one hour? Um, one and a half. One and a half hour. Okay, so we're trekking. going trekking for one and a half hours out to find the elephants. And it's not too hot yet, but. <laughs> This coming. Is, <laughs> this is Cambodia in April and it is very hot so I expect it's going to get very hot very quickly. Let's go find, we're looking for the baby group which is a group of the 12 elephants that they have here at the sanctuary um, that has a baby. I'm not sure how much of a baby, like maybe one or one year old or something. Um, but yeah, really excited to go find them. So usually the route is a little smaller or shorter, but uh, one of the car has broken down so we just gotta find a way through the forest instead of by car on foot. And like as you, Jackie said, like the weather is okay so far, but it's very pleasant. And also to know that we're looking for elephants, it's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's what makes everything okay. And it's pretty wild here, like this is a proper jungle path. <laughs> oh, a little branch. <laughs> into the jungle and we just spotted oh, the elephants. Right. Get out. Oh my gosh, they're coming right towards us. There's a baby. right up to us, kind of looked at us, checked us out, and then turned around. And now they're just over there eating, so I'm gonna go have another look at them.
in behind. She was cornered by an elephant. And the mom looked at me and I wasn't sure if she was like threatening. But they were so close, it was so amazing. They just walked by. Sometime constipation. Yeah, and then her poop's very long like this. This is from Nung Wan. Yeah, for me, we go. So they monitored their poo by seeing if they're in good health and he just showed us that that poo here had a lot of seeds and the leaves were very much intact so one of the elephants saw all that she doesn't have teeth anymore so she can only eat like soft bananas so they just want to make sure that they eat 300 kilogram food per day and I drink a lot, eat a lot so, so this yeah. girlie behind us is almost this 60 is years old, she's 59 time. No, 73. That one down there is 59. This one's 73. 73? Yeah. She's 73 years old. And she's called the Grumpy Grandma. And you don't want to get too close to her. So what happens is the baby elephant comes to people basically looking for food, begging for food and uh, then she gets too close and the mum elephant gets protective so you have to be really careful with that you just can't just play with the baby it sounds really cute and adorable and I really want to do it but I also don't want to be trampled by an elephant today so you gotta watch out Alright, so our morning hike and elephant sightseeing is done. We're gonna make our way back slowly to, I don't know if it's to the truck or straight to the camp. And then we're gonna go visit the camp and have some food. It was crazy with the baby elephant. Yeah. So apart from trekking to see the elephants, which is obviously the fun part of volunteering, we are going to be helping them rebuild or expand a little bit on their clinic, which is where they treat their elephants. So we have to build some sort of fencing system. We're going to be going and helping with that. Cool. Can you with that? On palliative care, uh, just so people can approach, you know, see an elephant working, stand behind the picket fence, it's just a bit more official. Um, and also when people ask, you know, oh, where can I go and walk around? I want to see some of the site. They have a clear picket fence to not go beyond. Uh, All right, so basically fun. Mitchell has given us some jobs to do. First thing we need to do is build a fence. So we're not actually building the fence, we're digging the holes to put the pillars in. We'll see how far we get with that this afternoon. So there's one, two, three, four, six of us doing that. And then there's three other people over. They have an elephant training area uh, where they train the elephants so that they can then treat them medically. And they, the wood's kind of rotten. It's gotten a bit of termites in there. So they're actually chipping away all the wooden, rotten wood from that. So that's why there's a lot of banging behind us. You'll just have to deal with it because we're doing it for the elephants, guys. This guys, Jacqueline doing physical work. Who would have ever hey, thought? I'm the one that grew up on a farm. <laughs> oh my god, that is seriously hard work. I'm sweating so much. But 
rewarding because you know you're doing it for the right thing. Uh. All right, the team has amazingly dug 13 holes in less than two hours, which honestly I'm really impressed with because it is very hard. And we've got some battle wounds. Oh. I've got quite the, <laughs> quite the blister on my thumb there and a few more in other places on my hands. But we dug the foundations for a fence to be built. So whoever comes here yeah, takes some time to appreciate this fence. Yeah, you appreciate this fence that we dug the holes for. So we're going to head back to camp now, wash all this dirt off us because it is very dirty business okay before we go and take a shower and clean ourselves up we're going to give you a little tour of what the rooms are like if you were going to volunteer or stay here as well you get to see what you're getting otherwise you just get to see where we're sleeping tonight all right let me show you my jungle crib <laughs> steep stairs so no drunken nights so i'd like to call it the patio or the ambiance room the, the groovy room because we have a beautiful bench here facing this insane view of just nature trees it's a bit of a valley so you really have some depth to the thickness of it now get inside you have a very simple bed which is like a big single bed you have two of them mozinet and uh, the guy that did escort us who is also volunteering here did mention that if there was any snake or scorpions just to go and check in with a responsible person up there so that's reassuring so it is pretty basic accommodation but like max said it is everything that you need and the view behind you is so spectacular there's a really nice breeze at the moment so hopefully it won't be too hot tonight Good morning beautiful people, we've just had an amazing sleep, there's no fan and no aircon but it all worked out, as long as you got the mozzinette, you're perfectly fine, Jacqueline's still sleeping, we also, we also got to sleep with the cats so that's a very rare thing that I tolerate but it helped because in case there was some spooky insect or something like this Everyone's still sleeping, I think. There's no noise. It's just the noise of nature. Best noise. Good morning, people, and welcome to day two of volunteering at the Elephant Valley Project. We woke up this morning to the most amazing view over the jungle. We're gonna go hike out this morning to find some more elephants. And then later on this afternoon, we're actually gonna be preparing some of the elephant food for them. So make sure you stick around to that part of the vlog. But for now, let's go find some more elephants. This is Ruby, and then she's so small elephant, she had an eye problem. Both blind, and she don't know how to walk to the base camp, you can see, the road. And her hood is yellow, and he sit on her neck and guide her to the base camp to get medicine, to get eye wash. So her best friend over here, so her name is Sambo. The Sambo is in her 63 years old. The Sambo in her 63 years old, so it's quite big size. They are so much best friends together. They're living together about six, seven years. And Sambo originally she came from Phnom Penh, city girl. And Ruby she came from our Busra village. So Busra waterfall. Yep. The Sambo in her 63 years old, so it's so much famous elephant living in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. But many thousands, many million. Just as we started our trek, we passed a couple of elephants that were going down to camp to get treatment. They both get treated every single day uh, to make sure they stay healthy. So those two were just passing by and now we're trekking further into the jungle to go and find some more. 
and yeah so far it's been a great morning what a way to start the morning a trek in the jungle a couple of elephants i mean it's gonna be a great day That is so crazy! I'm there on the log in the middle of a river in Cambodia watching wild, ele well, wild elephants drinking out of a river. just enjoying a drink of the water, flicking themselves with branches. It's really nice. So all the elephants at EVP were pretty much captive elephants. So the reason that they have this sanctuary is they're trying to teach them to kind of be wild without actually being wild. So they need them to be tame to a certain extent because otherwise they can't treat them, they can't control them. Um, but they want them to live a natural life rather than a captive life as well So they kind of let them try and teach them how to find their own food by putting them with other elephants who already know how to do that So that they don't have to supplement their diet so much Letting them live a semi-wild life rather than captive, which is really nice There's so many bugs <laughs> up at jungle trekking now where there's no path we're just going through the bushes and uh it's kind of walking with the elephants basically letting them do their own thing giving them some space but enjoying their company get this is right there so we have someone following us now Nope. Oh, there's a fish. Whoa, whoa. Okay. I'll let go. Can't do it, but you're at the back now. It's too comfortable with us now. We got used to our smell. They stopped following us. So staying here has been so beautiful. We've just had our two hour rest 
kind of between the trek enjoying lunch and resting afterwards and it's so peaceful right behind you is this amazing view so right here I'm standing in the actual kind of lounge room area so there's lots of comfortable chairs and books and things like that and it's kind of just the communal area where everyone sits enjoys a cup of tea we played some card games here last night and then in between here the next room over is the kitchen and from the kitchen it actually leads into the dining area where we have one big communal table and a couple of other small tables when they're really busy. The best thing about both of these two rooms is that the view looks over into the valley, into the jungle, and it's absolutely stunning. Okay, so we've been given an assignment. Unfortunately, it's not baby elephant food, but we have to finish basically what we started yesterday, which was the fence. So we dug the hole yesterday. Today, we're going to trim some trees so that they can go in those holes. So Jacqueline has been uh, given the task of chopping down a tree. And uh, yeah, so we need 13 trees. The ow! Sorry, don't stand up. It already began. This is quite fun. Timber. I'm so proud of myself. I can't believe I cut a tree. I'm still very proud of myself. So we have to clear all of the extra branches off. And then I've just measured it. Five axe lengths. We're using very accurate measuring here. And I'm gonna saw it to the right length. This is so fun. The next step is just to kind of smush the remaining branches down so that they act as a mulch so that the area we just cut can regrow. It's uh, definitely slow moving when you're working with so many people and especially people who don't exactly know what they're doing, like us, and want to double check. But Max is about to cut down the next tree. I can't believe, look at this beautiful fence palings we've made from digging the holes ourselves to chopping down the trees to make the fence palings. We did everything, which is so satisfying. We don't get to see the fence fully finished because we don't have the wire for it, but I'm pretty happy with that. There is a hell of a lot of bugs. Oh my God, what a day. Sweaty but super satisfied. We finished our two days volunteering at the Elephant Valley Project. You can actually volunteer for longer. Some of the guys that we met who were volunteering there had been there for two weeks. There was one person who was even volunteering for 10 weeks, which is amazing. But if you don't have time for a multi-week volunteering, you can just do a couple of days here when you come to Cambodia. And we highly, highly recommend it because EVP not only helps the rescued elephants, they also put a lot of money and support back into the local Benong community here. So that's definitely a thumbs up in our books. So we'll see you in the next one. There's a lot of bugs in the <laughs> Cambodian jungle. <laughs> oh, yo, yo, look at this. Woo!